This is Economic Impact. Conversations from Emirates Development Bank. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Economic Impact. Today we have another fantastic guest with us, the CEO of Acme Interlog, Mr. Naveen Narayan. So Naveen, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much for having me over. Thank you. Can we just start by asking a bit about Acme? about the history of it, how it came about. It's such an interesting company, a logistics company that is um, in the uh, field of manufacturing the robotics and automation factories. So I'm very curious, how did you come into this business and how did it evolve and become what it is today? Sure. Um, Well, the actual business was started by my father Mm -hmm. um, in 1975. So we are almost close to 50 years of uh, operating here in the UAE. And what form was it when your father started? Because it couldn't have been robotics no, it's automation. No, not robotics. Yes. No. So what we started off was basically into engineering components, okay. sourcing it from Europe and the US, mm-hmm. and also into warehousing as in the traditional shelving and racking. Right. Um, I joined the business sometime close to 98. Mm-hmm. And so I had done my engineering. And so I wanted to actually kind of develop, develop the business a bit more and get into some level of manufacturing as such. Mm-hmm. And that's when we started focusing on bringing some level of automation into the into the business. Right. Initially, it was more about uh, trading in automation components. Mm-hmm. But by in the last six to seven years, we started focusing more on the automation vertical, as right. in where we actually develop solutions for customers who require warehouse automation. And you build it all in-house? Yes, that's that's the USP that we can have, that right. we can say that we have, because uh, what, we are the only company in the Middle East that actually design, build, mm-hmm. install, and service solutions right here from Dubai. Right, and I've had the uh, the privilege of visiting your, your factory and your warehouse, and it's quite impressive what you have managed to put together and, and what you actually create here in the UAE. Um, but just taking it back to to that that pivot in your in your business where you began to, uh, as you said, trade in the components and then you decided, let me manufacture maybe some of these things myself. What was that uh, uh, light bulb moment where, where you decided that let me go into the manufacturing of these components? Well, uh, the actual honest uh, truth is that uh, when we started the business, uh, when we started this automation business, what we realized was that a lot of the partners that we were working with out of Europe and uh, Asia, uh, they would deliver solutions based on the requirements that we have initially e- explained to them. But when it comes down to actually implementing the solutions in this region, it was a little bit more complicated. Right. The customer expectations are quite different. Mm-hmm. And we were stuck in between trying to manage our vendors and also our customers. So then we decided that, wait a second, this is something that we can also do. Mm-hmm. And this was the reason why we decided that we will manufacture the solutions as per the local requirements and be able to cater to the customers here in a much faster way. Right, right. Um, as I was saying, I had the privilege of visiting your factory and seeing uh, some of these actual robots in action. And some very impressive ones, huge robotic arms, uh, different automation conveyor belts. Uh, what are What is one of the ones that you, you are most proud of and why? Um, one of the advantages that we have in the in our product portfolio right now is uh, our automated storage and retrieval systems. Mm-hmm. We are able to design and build stacker cranes and mini loads to handle pallets and boxes up to a height of up to 40 meters, mm-hmm. uh, various di- different dimensions and sizes. Right. Uh, the other thing that we have actually done in the last two years is uh, focus more on the software software piece. Right. So now we have a dedicated team of uh, software engineers that design and deliver solutions, uh, AI-enabled solutions, you could say, mm-hmm. uh, that are catering to warehouse automation robotics. Amazing. And that's something that we've actually built from the from the scratch and now we have an excellent portfolio of software solutions that uh, that p- link along with our hardware that we deliver. That's great, that's great. And how have you seen the uptake of your products and services over the last five year period, especially post COVID, how have you seen it? Actually COVID was a very defining moment for us. Though, mm-hmm. though we've been in the business with warehouse automation since 2018, mm-hmm. um, we did have some success. There were projects running but uh, post covid or at least when once covid started uh, businesses started realizing that uh, the supply chain is not as smooth as you know, it right. it used to be and that there should be more focus on that and that's when we've seen a lot of businesses investing in uh, warehouse automation mm-hmm. and in on top of that focusing on businesses that are in the region so they're able to actually deliver faster amazing so there was a net positive impact of covid to your business uh, um, um, let's say requests and and 
and clients actually requesting these kinds of solutions to be implemented in their warehouses and their factories. Absolutely. What happened yeah. prior to uh, COVID was that uh, the warehouse environment was always considered to be uh, given that it would always work right because yeah. you had a warehouse unless potentially it caught fire or something like that, this warehouse would always operate. Mm-hmm. The manpower would, would come deliver the, solu- the products to the customers and this was running relatively smooth. Mm-hmm. Ever since COVID, they realized that no, there are chances of disruptions and uh, that you had to mitigate these. And you also had the higher volumes coming up over the right. last couple of years. Right. And this has uh, caused a lot of businesses to actually focus on the warehouse environment, right. on the supply chain part of it. And that's when you actually see a lot of businesses actually focusing on uh, automating their warehouses. Right. I've also noted that you export, I think, the majority of what you actually produce to the yes. region. Um, can you talk a bit about that? What are some of the countries that you export to and what are the kind of projects that you've been uh, associated with? Sure. Um, actually, almost 60 to 65% of our business is mm-hmm. actually overseas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of business in Saudi, in Oman, primarily the GCC. Right. Uh, we have offices in India where we're doing some projects. Uh, we also have uh, an office in Germany and mm-hmm. we have a couple of projects that we're doing in Europe right now, in Hungary, in Latvia. And they're kind of unique projects because they are not just exactly for warehouse automation. They are for kind of, uh, what can you say, the like uh, industrial applications. Right. And uh, we are using these warehouse automation components that we have designed and developed, uh, kind of modifying it to, to apply to our industrial environment mm-hmm. uh, for a manufacturing environment. And we are able to cater to such requirements also. Amazing. Um- I can imagine that easily translating back to the UAE based on all the manufacturing development that's having here, that's happening here in the country, this industrial development that's happening here. Sure. Uh, what we are seeing is that especially with the government push on, on this Operation 300 billion and yes. all the incentives that the government is providing to industries that want to set up over here, there's a lot more industrial base coming into the country. And, and these industrial base, if they have to compete on a global scale, they need to have state-of-the-art technologies that are able to deliver products and solutions to their customers at an optimum price. And this is where automation comes into play. And uh, we are happy to be able to help. Amazing. Um, what What are some of the industrial applications that you're working on now in Europe uh, that could potentially translate back to the UAE? Um, <clears throat> we, are look, we are working on some kind of vertical farm kind of solutions where okay. uh, people are growing proteins. Okay. in vertical farms mm-hmm. uh, for consumption for animal feed as well as for human consumption. Mm-hmm. And we are developing solutions for them. And there are similar projects that we are now hoping to do in, in the Middle East also. So is that automation of these vertical farms? Yes. Okay, so, so even the vertical farm itself will not will have very little human uh, uh, need. It will, be, it will be basically robotics, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. That would go in and, and, and do most of the work. Absolutely, yeah, that's the thing. So the idea is that we should be having a fully automated system where there's minimal human intervention, mm-hmm. uh, keeping the place hygienic, and this is at the same time being able to in- increase the productivity from these places. And what's the size of this, the square footage of this kind of a, of a, of a operation or setup? Uh, the, some of the facilities that we are working on is close to about between eight to 10,000 square meters. Wow. So quite large. It's quite large facilities. Quite yeah. large. But I can uh, only imagine that it must be, you know, uh, high yield, you know, for, for, it's, for it's the It's high yield. And in some cases, actually, it's it's uh, it's, it's a bit of uh, new technology also that's coming into play yeah. when it comes to pro- uh, growing proteins. So it's, it's different from uh, the typical plant-based uh, solutions that we are uh, right. talking about. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, are any Anything else that you can foresee for the industrial sector, for the manufacturing sector in the UAE? Uh, I know that you guys have been very much focused on the automation of the warehouses um, and, and, you know, the robotics that go into that and the advanced technology. But, you you know, you touched on something very um, critical is that the, the factories themselves will need local players like yourself that can develop custom solutions from the robotics and automation for their actual manufacturing lines. Have you, have you looked at this? Have you had any conversations with any of the factories on these things? Yes, in fact, we have we've done quite a few projects over here for local mm-hmm. industry where, it, uh, where we've used robotics and automation for the manufacturing line itself. Mm-hmm. We work with uh, tea manufacturing companies here as well as with uh, defense-related businesses where they require mm-hmm. some level of automation both in the manufacturing side as well as for the warehousing side. So th- there is a lot of potential. On top of that, there are a lot of businesses, especially in the food and beverage manufacturing, mm-hmm. where there's a great potential for automation in the manufacturing side. Also from the end of line, what we call end of lines solutions, where 
once the product is manufactured and packaged, we take it, we palletize it, and we uh, we put it into the racks, and then we get it ready for dispatch, all mm -hmm. fully automated. Amazing, amazing. And and where do you see your company in the next five to ten years? Is there is there any areas of focus that you are looking to move into or to transform the organization? How do you see the company's evolution the next five to ten years? What we've seen over over time is that. Uh, like all, we had initially catered to business, the larger businesses that were looking for warehouse automation. Mm -hmm. uh, now that that has been an accepted for technology within these organizations, there are middle, uh, middle si mid sized companies also that are actually looking for warehouse automation. This was something that we were not looking and uh, it is we were not catering to before. Um, our focus is now on developing solutions that could actually cater to this industry. Mm -hmm. When we talk about such kind of companies, we are talking about companies that require a smaller level of automation, some kind of uh, autonomous mobile robots, AGVs and other modular solutions that we could actually deliver to them. And as they grow, we can always scale up. And this also means that there has to be additional investment in the software bit because uh, software is critical in these industries. Absolutely. So the investment in the software bit do you have your own coders do you write your own yes. software yeah do we've got we've got close to about 20 engineers mm -hmm. software coders within our off, uh, within our facility here in dubai and they are developing solutions uh, that are bo both for robotics as well as for standard auto standard you know, large scale warehouse automation like with conveyor systems uh, the focus has been on nowadays you can say on the on the ai bit so mm -hmm. they're able to do some predictive analysis of uh, trends in, in in the warehouse operation as well as for the maintenance bit also amazing and um do you foresee that the software part of your business could essentially become its own business so where you could maybe you know be writing software for um factories but not necessarily selling them the hardware components maybe it's something that they're utilizing in their own systems absolutely uh, one of the verticals that we have right now in the software bit is the warehouse management systems itself uh -huh. so we have our own wms software that is available now mm -hmm. for the market so we are able to actually deliver that part mm -hmm. they're also looking at what we call the manufacturing execution systems yeah. which are basically used by factories for the manufacturing process mm -hmm. so that's the other vertical that we could also deliver to our customers along with the predictive maintenance piece yeah. And this doesn't necessarily have to be based on our hardware. So it's it's a vertical by itself. Right, right. And Naveen, you know, you're sitting in a very interesting position because you essentially are a, a supplier and partner to a lot of the industrial base in the UAE, but also in the GCC in the sense of what, what you give them from a solution system perspective. How have you seen the evolution of this sector, the, the manufacturing sector of the UAE over the last five years? Um, I see a greater investment in the manufacturing sector right now. It used to, we used to always focus on the UAE as being a trading hub. Right. It's no longer that. Yes. There's a lot of uh, manufacturing happening here, a lot of uh, high value manufacturing happening here. Mm -hmm. And along with that, with the whole food security uh, approach that the government is ha having, there's a lot of investment even in food processing and food manufacturing. Right. So that's also been another vertical that you see has has potential has a tremendous growth right now right um, and along with that especially with the costs of uh, manufacturing cost of energy increasing in europe mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of uh, companies actually relocating their production to the uae also mm -hmm. uh, this uh, there was always a shift to manufacture in china but i guess the middle east is also showing that it has great potential right and the value addition is substantial right i mean especially post covid with decentralized hubs as opposed to centralized uh, hubs, right? Yeah. Uh, the focus was always on China and manufacturing, but now with decentralized hubs post COVID, the UAE has really positioned itself as the manufacturer. Absolutely. Hub. And one of the biggest advantages the UAE has is that it's able to attract talent from around the world. Mm. And so, and that's one of the biggest advantages that we have over other countries in the region also. Mm. And this has helped uh, companies set up businesses here and uh, bring in talent also. That's great. That's great. That's that's a great advantage. Absolutely. Um, so you're able to expand and grow your business with the right people. Yes, okay. and this has also helped us also because uh, uh, when we when it came to acquiring talent for us over here, it was quite easy for us to get talent from around the world to move and uh, come and support us in our growth. Absolutely. Speaking about talent, I mean, I'm sure you get some of the best talent from from all over the world, as you just mentioned. What do you see as future trends? You know, as this talent comes into your organization, they have new ideas, 
Um, they have exposure to different markets. Uh, what are some of the trends that you can foresee coming into manufacturing 4.0 and the future of manufacturing in the country and the region? Um, I guess the implementation of Industry 4.0 solutions is going to uh, go, be on an uptick. Mm -hmm. uh, even when it comes to, say, for example, warehouse automation, traditionally people used to avoid warehouse automation because uh, they were not aware of how to run these systems. But now you're seeing that because you're able to bring talent from elsewhere, even as an end customer, they have more confidence in being able to run a system which is more automated and re relying less on uh, a large, amount, large pool of manpower on the ground. So you're seeing a lot of uh, investment going in that direction. And I feel that there'll be a lot more implementation of robotics because you cannot scale up and deliver quality if you continue to rely on a huge manpower pool on the shop floor. Right, right. You know, I visited lots of factories and to different variants of, of human versus uh, automation, robotics, you know, in, in, in there. But there's always some human component there, some individuals that are on the floor and so on. Can you foresee from where you sit today and, and what you do in your line of business that you will walk into a factory that is completely robotics and automation without any human intervention? Um, I don't see robots being able to replace humans altogether. There okay. will be, always be the need for humans. Okay. Uh, the dexterity levels for humans at least are, f are far greater than what the robots can do. Right. Uh, the ability to change things and uh, be able to uh, move uh, to move uh, modify their actions depending on the scenario is uh, something that we humans have which at the moment at least the robots don't have yes right. with the, with, uh, you know, with AI and uh, with all this uh, GPT type of technologies and stuff these things would come but I don't think it's going to reach a point where you can eliminate humans all the uh, all together from the manufacturing environment okay okay what I what I've seen is is um, you know in some of let's say the most automated um, factories where they'll have entire sections of the factory operated by one operator. Um, and these are quite sizable you know, sections of the, of the uh, manufacturing process for the products that are being produced. Um, and so the entire factory, uh, one on the food production side that I've seen, quite large one that produced food oil or vegetable oil, um, the entire factory maybe had about five sections and each section would have one operator, essentially one individual. Um, and then the the end of it, uh, you would have the the boxing or the you know the wrapping and that kind of thing, and and there was more uh, humans there essentially do, doing the the boxing and so on. Um, but I think I think from what you're saying, it sounds to me that future factories would possibly be that extreme where you might have one person overseeing you know a thousand or two thousand square meters of operations and lines, but you'll always need that individual to oversee. Absolutely. Yes, uh, you can always say that AI is going to kind of replace that too. But mm. in reality, no, yeah. uh, that's not going to happen. And also, like you were just uh, uh, talking about a food manufacturing company, mm -hmm. uh, such businesses, yes, they could go in for a high level of automation because the, it is a very streamlined process as right. such. There's not much changes happening on the production line once the machines have been installed. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of other discrete manufacturing that uh, industries that are there with that to support uh, uh, support the local industry. For example, when it comes to the construction uh, and building materials type of business, when it comes to carpentry and woodworking, mm -hmm. these kind of businesses will always have to rely on humans. Right, the, the skills, the the skills, skills that, that they is have. there. And right. also the fact that uh, uh, each project is unique. Each project is uh, not kind yeah. of a custom. different custom. And so it's difficult to actually automate that level uh, and bring in robotics. And, and it's the same for us. Although we deliver automated solutions for us, uh, we uh, we still rely a lot on manpower for our systems because every system is different and unique. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so the evolution of the company into the next five to ten years, you see yourself expanding more, or you see yourself increasing more uh, share of market in the UE, expanding more regionally and, and going out further, or or more in the UE. Um, I guess it's a, it's going to be a combination of both. As the UAE economy also grows and the industry b base grows, I see that volume of business in this in this country also would increase. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we've always had an export focus. So I would say that we would keep growing that. And considering the fact that we've actually started delivering systems in other countries, especially in India, as well as in Europe, uh, there's no reason to scale back. Mr. Naveen Aryan, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you I very really much. I really appreciate you coming in and having the conversation. I wish Acme all the best in the future. Thank you very much for having me over. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
economic impact. Conversations from Emirates Development Bank.